Hello and welcome to this free preview lecture series of my on-demand AP Electrical and Computer Exam Preparation course. In this lecture, we are going to develop understanding of a very important concept within probability, which is permutation as well as combination. And we are going to look at the difference between permutation and combination. But before we dive into the content, I would really appreciate if you could like this video, click the subscribe button and the bell icon if you haven't already done so. Hello and welcome to this lecture on the topic of permutation and combination, which is part of section 2, Probability and Statistics. Learning objective of this lecture include understanding permutation and combination, and more importantly, the difference between permutation and combination. Permutation. What is permutation? Permutation is an arrangement of a set of objects in which order is important. Okay, this is the key difference between permutation and combination. Let me give you an example. Let's say you are given A, B, C. Okay, now in terms of permutation, A, B, C and B, A, C or C, A, B are three different permutations. Okay, but all of these three will qualify as a single combination because combination doesn't care about the order whereas permutation cares about the order. And we will now look at a mathematical formula which can help us determine the number of permutations that we can have for a data set. So this mathematical formula helps us to calculate the number of permutations and it depends on the total number of objects and the number of objects that you are taking at a time. So number of total objects is equal to n whereas number of objects that you're taking at a time is equal to r. So according to this formula, number of permutations is equal to n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. Now, if you have n objects and you're taking all of those n objects at a time, then this becomes n factorial divided by n minus n factorial, which is n factorial divided by zero factorial, and it is simply equal to n factorial. Let's go back to our example of a, b, c. Now in this case, you can see that total number of objects is equal to three, and I am taking three objects at a time. When I showed you b, a, c, and c, a, b, so basically I'm taking three objects at a time, and that's what basic your r represents. So if I'm taking three objects at a time, it basically means that n is equal to r, so number of permutations is simply equal to n factorial. So three factorial um, is simply three multiplied by two multiplied by one, which is equal to six. Now, just a very quick review of factorials. n factorial basically means n multiplied by n minus one, multiplied by n minus two, and so on, okay? So if you have six factorial, so six factorial basically means six times five times four times three times two times one, okay? So for this case, if I'm taking three items at a time, all the three letters, A, B, C, it means that I can have six permutations. Let us now take a look at an example involving permutations. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and we're being asked how many ways can the following numbers be arranged respecting the order. Now this is a um, subtle way of hinting at permutation, right? So in the question, you might be asked to calculate the number of permutations, which is a no-brainer, but I can also ask a question like this. So these are still number of arrangements, but then you're respecting the order. So that should ring a bell because you respect the order in permutation. Okay, we are taking three numbers at a time. So that tells you that r is equal to three, the total number of uh, numbers, items that we have over here is n, which is equal to five. So we will simply apply this formula, n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. So we have five factorial divided by five minus three factorial, which is equal to 60. Now, if I were to sort of expand this, just for your understanding, five times four times three times two times one is what you will end up in the numerator. And in the denominator, you have five minus three factorial, which is two factorial, so two times one. So you can simply cancel these last two items. And what you have to calculate is five times four times three, five times four is 20 and 20 times three is equal to 60. Now a variation of the same question, 
how many permutations we can have if we are taking all five items at a time. Obviously, if you're taking all five items at a time, you will end up with greater number of permutations. But to calculate it exactly, we have to use the formula again. So we have n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. Now r is also equal to one. And we saw this equation previously. This simply becomes n factorial when n is equal to r. Okay, so five factorial is five times four times three times two times one, which is 120. So in this case, if you're taking all five items at a time, then you can have 120 permutations. Now that you have understood permutation, and I also explained you the difference between permutation and combination, understanding combination should be pretty simple, straightforward. Now combination is also an arrangement of a set of objects. Okay, so this is a similarity between permutation and combination. But in the case of combination, order is not important. Okay, very quickly, ABC for uh, combination is same as BAC is same as CAB. So all of these will basically count as one combination. Mathematically, you can calculate the permutations and simply divide it by R. And we know that R N is equal to the total number of objects and R is equal to number of objects taken at a time. So if you're taking all the objects at a time, right, where n is equal to r, then there is only one combination. So that was example, a, b, c, right? I'm taking all the objects at a time. So I'm taking b, a, and c at a given time, right? So all of these will basically result in just one combination. And this is proven by this formula. Now in your calculators, all the NCES approved calculators have this feature of calculating combination and permutation. So you can either calculate factorials, right? But if you learn how to calculate the permutations and combinations directly from the calculator, it will basically save you a couple of steps. Let's take a look at this example. We have A, B, C, D, E, and disregarding the order, how many ways can we arrange them taking three letters at a time? Okay, disregarding the order or not respecting the order basically is, a uh, hint at combination and three letters at a time basically means your r is equal to three. So we will use this formula where we will first calculate the permutation, right? Where n is equal to three, n is equal to five, and r is equal to three, and then simply divided by r factorial and you'll end up with 10. Again, you can use this in the calculator, punch in n, punch in r, and use the combination function and it will give you directly this. So you won't have to first calculate P and R and then calculate the R factorial and then finally arrive at this, right? So it will save you a couple of steps. Now, if we were taking all five letters at a time, what would be the number of combinations? We've already seen this before. If you are taking all the items at a time, then there's only one combination, right? And we went through that example a couple of times already. So in this lecture, we learned about permutation and combination, and most importantly, we learned how to distinguish the two. They are very similar, but if you don't know the key difference between permutation and combination, it is very easy to confuse them. So hopefully by going through this lecture, you have a better understanding of what permutation is and what combination is, and by going through the practice problems, you're able to apply the knowledge that you've learned on questions if you see in the exam. If you found this preview lecture helpful, I am confident that you will also greatly benefit from the full course that contains over 150 lectures and covers all the topics that are found in the latest NCES F Electrical and Computer Exam Specification. You will also get access to tons of quizzes and mini-exams in this course that will help you get additional practice along with a bonus full-length computer simulated practice exam. This streamlined and well-reviewed course comes with an amazing 30-day full refund policy, no questions asked. On top of all this, I've also included a special discount link in the text section of this video. 